That was only level five. You may think there are less levels of Little Wing, or more, but guess what? There's eight levels of Little Wing, okay? That's right, we are going to go deep into this amazing song. It's really become like a standard. For guitar players, really any genre of guitar player, they know this chord progression, and it's because it's so good, it's so fun to play over. And this isn't necessarily gonna be like how to solo over this, or how to play it even. I'm really gonna get into what this chord progression is and how far you can potentially take it. This is meant to be some inspiration. You don't have to only apply these concepts to Little Wing. Little Wing is just the best chord progression ever written, so it's just fun to demonstrate the various concepts that I'm going to go over, but rest assured you can apply anything that I show you in this lesson to any chord progression out there. So take that for what it's worth. I'm also gonna be getting into a lot of music theory, so if you're not familiar with music theory, check out Guitar Super System, it's linked down below. And without further ado, let's get to the first level of Little Wing, which is just gonna be the bass notes. I'm gonna play the bass notes. We are going to establish what this chord progression is. It is in the key of E minor or G major, respectively. Pretty straightforward. We're gonna stay straightforward for level two because we're gonna look at open chords, how to play this chord progression in open chords. These are the first chords you learn as a beginning guitar player, but it's helpful to look at the chord progression this way so you can see the various quality of the different chords, major or minor, respectively. Let's see level two of Little Wing. Pretty straightforward again. Now we're gonna move up to level three of Little Wing. Level three is one triad per chord change. I am a proponent of triads. I am a triads activist. I'm the guy who knocks on your door and says, excuse me, sir, do you have a moment to speak about our Lord and Savior? Triads. Now again, this is gonna be stuff I'm gonna be teaching you one-on-one -on -one in the virtual guitar camp that I mentioned. So check the link down below if you want some interactive help, like a Skype lesson almost. Or, like I said, Guitar Super System is also an option. But let me just break it down for you. The triad form is a root, a third, and a fifth. And there are inversions of these triads. And they go all over the guitar neck depending on what note is where will dictate the inversion, and that is that. Let's hear the third level of Little Wing. was the third level, now let's move on to level four, which is going to take 
all of the inversions of triads all across the guitar neck. So I'm not just gonna be playing one triad per chord change. We're going to be playing multiple triads per chord change. So instead of just playing this second inversion E minor and waiting until the G major comes, I'm gonna be playing as many E minor triads as I can fit in there tastefully. And this is an important level to understand because this is really what the entire song is based around. These triads are the foundation of all of music, but especially on display in Jimi Hendrix's guitar playing and subsequent guitar players who were influenced after him. So here we go, level four, multiple triads per chord change. So level five, we've actually already covered in the very beginning of this video. It's literally the intro to Little Wing. That's how you play that. And those little nuances are just really important to learn, I think. Uh, just a couple things, I'm not gonna play it over again, but for the longest time, I was doing this in the intro. And I was trying to play that little flourish with this G triad happening, what you gotta do is actually do this. See how much easier that is and then come up with the triad. So, just a little, uh, little trick there for you if you've been struggling with this little bar chord here in the intro, it's actually simpler than you thought. So, level five, we covered. Let's move on to level six, which is Stevie Ray Vaughan, John Mayer embellished sound of the little wing progression. This is probably the most fun level once you get to it. All my favorite guitar players when they play Little Wing are drawn towards this style. Um, so like I said, think SRV or John Mayer or Eric Gales or even Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, uh, when they do it in their G3 jams, it kind of goes in this direction. And that's basically having a lot of flourishes built still on the triads, but still following the chord changes. It's like a non-jazz version of following the chord changes and playing through the chord changes. So it's pentatonic driven, I would say. So we're primarily in the E minor. And we come up to G. And that kind of almost sounds major. And then we come to A. And you can play the A minor pentatonic. Because it still shares a lot of notes with the E minor pentatonic. And we're back to the E and then we come to B. And this is gonna be B minor pentatonic. And then it goes chromatic, so you can actually share a bunch of these licks chromatically. You know, something like that. Just very basic, uh, and then it comes up to the C major. So again, this is where the blues kinda, you gotta focus on what note you're hitting over the C major because the, uh, the E there is gonna be kinda important. You don't necessarily wanna hit like, this, uh, the fifth note in the E minor pentatonic scale because that's gonna clash with the C a little bit. So that's where people can kind of get tripped up when it goes to the C major and the D major part uh, and then back to the G and F, people are like, oh crap, where am I? Um, so this is a very important level because we are learning to not only follow the chord changes but follow them in a musical way while still sticking to our bluesy roots. So let's move on to level six. Okay, level seven. Playing a guitar solo over these chord changes without the chord changes happening, but still being able to hear the chord changes. This is gonna be primarily focusing on 
targeting the third of each chord. So we're getting into harmony pretty deep here. When we go through the harmony, we have an E minor chord. So the third of E minor is gonna be a minor third and it's this G. So we wanna target a G over this E minor chord. And then we wanna be able to play through pretty much relying on thirds to help the listener hear the harmony without actually playing it. So for example, here's the third of E, then we're moving up to G, which is B. You can hear that A, back to the E. Now we're gonna go up to B, and the third of B is And then here's a C, which is E. So you can hear how those thirds are just really expressive and really illustrate the chord very nicely to the listener. So basically you don't just wanna play the thirds, obviously you wanna be a little bit more musical than that. Having some passing notes, whether it's in the scale or not, will dictate maybe the level that you're on, but uh, for this level I'm gonna keep it pretty diatonic. Maybe help you hear the chord progression without actually playing the chord progression and just playing a melody consisting primarily of targeted thirds. Here is level seven of Little Wing. Finally, level eight, the final level of Little Wing that I care to show you. Um, it could go on and on after this one, but this is kind of the pinnacle that guitar players can take in many different directions, but it's basically jazzing up Little Wing. You like jazz? Check out the Guitar Camp or check out Guitar Super System if you really want to get in the weeds with this stuff, but Basically, I'm gonna change as many of these chord voicings as I can. So, for example, in E minor, we can change this to a jazzier E minor nine, and maybe to get from E minor to this F sharp G, that little chromatic walk up, we can change this to like an F sharp diminished sound. Maybe we'll have like the subdominant and then we'll have like an inversion of a G major seven chord. As you can hear, it's actually part of that. And here's another inversion, it's called a drop two. Uh, so there are many different substitutions you can make for these chords. For the A minor, I could try something like this. So this is an A minor add nine with a uh, the B here and the B here. So there's like two added ninths there. Maybe I can. That's a lot of uh, chromaticism happening there. But again, as long as you end in the right spot, there's no wrong notes in jazz. So we come up to the B and this is where we can get really creative because you can do a lot of different things here. Maybe you can get diminished with it. So that's basically going like that. It didn't sound like that, did it? But you could still kind of hear the harmony. And then we come up to the C major. So maybe like a do C added ninth. And then the cool part when this happens, and this is why this chord progression is so memorable and awesome, is even with this crazy jazz stuff that I'm gonna throw at you, you're still gonna hear this. It's just gonna be so satisfying, even though it's so uncomfortable, <laughs> uh, in a good way. Without further ado, this is the eighth and final boss level of Little Wing.
there you have it guys. The eight levels of Little Wing from basic to insanity uh, and everything in between. I hope this was helpful for you. Feel free to leave a comment if you uh, enjoyed any of these levels in particular or you have something else to add. And please check out the virtual guitar camp with myself and PRS and Tim Pierce and all these other amazing musicians. Uh, I know I am talking about it a lot guys, but I'm super excited about it and it's just a really big milestone for me and I want it to go well. And a lot of you have already signed up, which I'm really appreciative of. And I don't have anything else to say other than until next time, keep shredding.